The masterminds behind the Ultimate Fighting Championship expected it to be a one and done, quick buck spectacle. But the quick, easy, and big pay-per-view money meant there would be a sequel for 200. By March 1994, the UFC Brain Trust had booked a second tournament with twice as many competitors as the first. Although the card featured some shockingly violent beatdowns and delivered a huge hit on pay-per-view and on videotape, none of the challengers shared Ken Shamrock's submission grappling skills or presented a real threat to Hoist Gracie. Gracie's UFC winning streak would continue for another year and earn him wide renown as the best fighter in the world. What the newly minted mobs of American fight fans didn't know was that Hoist wasn't even the toughest fighter in his family. That title belonged to his older brother, Hickson. Hickson Gracie earned his notoriety in Brazil with a series of televised Valley Tudo matches in the 1980s, where he bested a hulking bruiser named Hey Zulu. Hickson's legend was burnished by the circulation of an underground VHS tape. The tape showed Hickson calling out and battering Hugo Duarte, a prominent representative of Jiu Jitsu's longtime rival in Brazil, Luta Livre, a type of catch wrestling. Corian Gracie's decision not to tap his brother Hickson to represent the family in the UFC was a bit of candy marketing. Corian realized that seeing the muscular and athletic Hickson beat people up wouldn't impress the American audience as much as seeing the scrawny hoist overcome much bigger foes via the miraculous techniques of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. In a matter of months, the UFC had made Hoist far more internationally famous than any member of his family had become in the decades of bare knuckle combat. Hickson would get his chance to demonstrate his abilities soon enough, though not in the US, but instead Japan. The Gracie name was known in Japan due to Father Helio's rivalry in the 1950s with judo legend Kimura, from whom the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu double wrist lock is now named. Kimura was also a pro wrestler and helped popularize professional wrestling in Japan. Japanese fans of Puro Resu, though, preferred a more realistic, strong style than American fans. This commitment to kayfabe by Japanese wrestlers would eventually lead some to ask why they couldn't do it for real. By the early 1990s, a slew of pro wrestling promotions experimenting with varying levels of real fighting would ignite a craze for combat sports in Japan. In addition to Pan Craze, which featured Ken Shamrock and Masakatsu Funaki, one of the instigators was Satoru Sayama, who was better known as the pro wrestler Tiger Mask. Sayama had so obsessed over shoot or real Puro Resu matches that he had come up with his own rule set for mixed martial arts called Shuto. In 1994, the Shuto organization decided to hold a Valley Tudo Japan tournament with the most brutal combat sports rule set yet seen in Japan. They invited Hickson and promised a paycheck that would make it worth his time. The Valley Tudo Japan tournament was very similar to that of the UFC's, a one-night competition between eight martial artists of different backgrounds. But in the end, results were the same. Karateka, judoka, kickboxing, wing chun, Hickson burned through them all like a fire through straw. None of those other martial arts were any match for Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Hickson was now as renowned in Japan as Hoist was in the US, perhaps even more so. In fact, his fame and fighting prowess was so great that it brought him into the crosshairs of MMA sibling, professional wrestling.